Hey guys, Cal here, ClassBritishSpirits.com, and today I have a very cool motorcycle that I'd like to share with you. I'm going to show you guys a 1970 Triumph TR6R, also known as the Sunset Tripper. Check it out. All right, so what makes this bike really, really unique and really special is number one, it's really original. This is probably about a 99.9% .9 original bike, but the bike was actually sold this way. So this is not something that a person built in their garage. This is not a home brew chopper. This was an actual bike that was sold at Triumph of Burbank in 1970. So based off the research that I've done on the Triumph Sunset Tripper, I've talked to a few people that were actually at the dealership, Triumph of Burbank, number one, which is Eddie Mulder. Some of you guys might know Eddie Mulder or know, know of the name. Eddie Mulder was a really big motorcycle racer, uh, mid, actually probably early 60s, late 60s, 70s. Anyway, so he rode for Triumph of Burbank and I've talked with him about this bike and some of the things that they did. Um, so again, what makes it special is it was actually sold there, but there's a lot of different accessories that you can buy for your Triumph. And essentially what Triumph of Burbank wanted to capture was instead of you building your own chopper, if you had the money and you didn't have the tools or the resources to build your own, you could simply go to the dealership and actually buy your own chopper just like this. So one of the main questions that still remains for me, but I don't have an answer to, maybe you guys might be able to answer that, is how many Sunset Trippers were actually made. Based off my research, I found that there was about a couple thousand that were made. I don't know if that were just modified bikes or actually built. Now this bike uh, would have been a stock 1970 TR6, so it would have been the green color, would have had fenders, just how it came from England. But when it went to Triumph of Burbank, all the pieces were taken off, and then this bike was basically customized and sold as the Triumph Sunset Tripper. Now, Eddie Mulder confirmed to me that the parts that were taken off the original bikes would have been taken to, let's say, Johnson Motors or Distributor and actually sold. So a lot of the parts that you see for sale on eBay, for example, dealer takeoffs, could have been off of a bike just like this. Um, it wasn't uncommon for other dealerships to do practices like this, building their own chopper or desert scrambler. So it makes it very unique. The next clip, we'll start going over some of the details that makes this bike the Sunset Tripper. So first things first, I want to go over some of the components here, but it's kind of a mix because you have stock parts that have been modified to work with some of the aftermarket accessories. So we're gonna start with the front of the bike and then we're gonna work our way back. And we're gonna go over all the details that make the Sunset Tripper a little bit more unique than some of the others. First, we have your standard 19 inch wheel. As you see here, this has a, a twin leading shoe or a, a dual leading shoe. This is gonna be the larger eight inch. We have the stock lowers but obviously we had the extended front end. Now these tubes have internal springs. Then you have a bracket here to stop some of the twist. Then you have your typical Bates headlight and the bracket. And then up here we have the twin clocks. These are black face. You have a speedometer and tachometer. Now, although this bike is a 1970 TR6R, those that are very familiar with Triumphs might actually notice that these two rubber boots were typically used from 1971 and later. So although this is a 1970 TR6R, more than likely, I said earlier the bike was sold in 70, it's possible it could have been sold later simply because of this boot here. Um, oil and frames, if you're familiar with those, had this rubber boot. So that could be a telltale sign of when this bike was actually sold. Um, and some articles, and I will post a link below in the description, um, talk about when the bikes were typically sold based off when the article was written. So for example, one of the articles that I will post, I believe it's like an early 60s Sunset Tripper, but it has these rubber boots. So I think in my opinion, that's a telltale sign, probably sold in 71, 72. So if that is true, that means they were using older Triumphs to basically sell to the public and try to get them out the door because at that time, Honda and the Japanese manufacturers were killing the market. All right, so as stated, we have the twin clocks here, typical blackface, speedo, and tachometer that we just recently had rebuilt. We have the dog bones here and a lot of chrome and these really groovy handlebars. Uh, the brake lever and the clutch lever feature the hole for your mirror, an eight millimeter hole or five sixteenths. That was 1970 only, or the first year that we saw that on the 1970 models. So that is typically the stock components that would have came on the bike, but there's a lot more. They didn't necessarily get rid of all the stock parts. They went ahead and kept the stock parts as much as they possibly can. Obviously that saves money. So let's take a look at this gas tank. All right, so earlier I said 99.9% .9 of the original. 
with the exception of the gas tank. The gas tank is what came with the bike. However, the paint job has been repainted. My buddy Mike down in Signal Hill, Long Beach area, I'll put his information in the description if you guys are interested. He literally took the original paint job, color, design, pinstripe, all the details of how the tank originally looked and he basically recreated it. And today it still blows my mind that he was able to uh, recreate the paint job and the style and basically capture that 1970s style paint job. So anyways, uh, so that's what the tank or the bike would have looked like when it came, you know, from Tri for Burbank. And again, Mike went ahead and recaptured that. All right, so we covered the gas tank. We're gonna start looking at the motor. So we'll come down here. So basically we have a 650cc uh, Triumph TR6R, still sporting the original Amo, uh, concentric, I'm sorry, uh, single carburetor. Um, we have the balance pipes here. So this is uh, unique for 1969 and 1970. So they went ahead and kept that. And a little bit lower, they have these forward footrests here. That is an aftermarket accessory. And as you can see, it's clamped onto the front of the frame. As you guys are well aware, 1970s had unique frames got the triangle pieces there so that helps you uh you know install the motor and also remove the motor now this oil tank right here is a stock oil tank that has been re-chromed um, i don't know the person's name that did the welding uh, eddie Mulder mentioned it to me but i've actually forgotten it but they went ahead and moved the cap a little bit forward and the reason why that they moved it forward is because of the seat that's on the bike originally you have the seat and hinges and be able to change or check the oil from the inside so with that being said and this seat being fixed there's no way to do it so the cap and the actual neck has been moved to the outside of the oil tank all right, so we have the cluster here. This is all the electronics. We have the ignition. And then on this side, same switch to position. It's gonna be for the light and for the tail light. So it's a very, very simple, very clean. Again, this is all custom made. Triumph of Burbank made this. So again, it's not something that, you know, a guy in his garage made. It's very unique and it's very tidy. All right, so we're gonna talk about this seat. This is a bait seat. This is an original seat, original cover, still nice and soft, but what's very unique about this seat is the brackets. So if you take a look here, and as I stated earlier, they use a lot of the stock components. These are literally the stock hinges that would have came off this bike. They went ahead and brazed these special bungs to be able to mount the back of the seat and also to the fender. So it's very unique, it's very smart. They literally use everything that they possibly could on the bike. So that is a unique aspect of it. And some of the other components, I don't know if you guys will be able to see it, is actually right underneath the seat. They still have the battery box. The rectifier is still in the location, but the horn has actually been moved. Typically the horn is gonna be on the front of the bike. This one is actually on the back area of the main frame, right between the battery. So in the next clip, we'll come around to this side and I'll show you a little bit more detail on that. All right, so if you look very closely, you'll see the Lucas horn, that is a 12 volt horn. And again, it wasn't in that location, but they decided to move it. So they, when they built these motorcycles, it really seemed like they had a, a very well thorough plan to be able to move all the parts to work with everything that they wanted, such as the seat or the oil tank. All right, so we're gonna start talking about the back of the bike. First thing that most people see on this bike is the peace sign. It's like really awesome. This thing is like really, really durable, it's solid. So that's kind of, uh, you know, very unique. I've seen other Sunset Trippers that have peace signs, a little bit, you know, different designs. So we have that component here. We have the earlier style. I think it's a 564 Lucas tail light. And we have a very small fender here. This has also been repainted. Uh, this fender, I believe, is off of a Triumph Tiger Cub. And we still have the original blue and yellow license plate. All right, so we have the original cocktail shakers. And let me tell you, British bikes have a really nice sound, but these mufflers are, are amazing. They have a really, really beautiful sound. And I'm not sure if the new mufflers on the market today have that same sound, but these are pretty nice. And you might notice over here, it has a different shape and it has a very nice bend and how it contours to the existing uh, cocktail shaker. So that's a telltale sign that these are original. Another thing is the chain guard. The chain guard, I wanna say is off of a 71 and later Triumph, or it could be off of a Harley or a universal chain guard. So that chain guard is very unique. They also move the location of the brake switch. So you have the brake switch and then they have a spring and something you know very, very clean and tidy, very generic, bolting it on the brake rod to be able to activate the switch. 
All right, we're gonna go right back to the front of the bike. Uh, missed something here. We have the Zinner diode. Now the Zinner diode typically is actually mounted right underneath the bottom of the triple shrink in this area here. So they've moved the Zinner diode underneath the gas tank. And the reason why they did that is obvious because there's no way to actually mount it here because you have the headlight and the headlight uh, bracket. So they moved the location of it. So it's not really a big deal, but it's just looking at the details that they put in it. You know, they have to braise bungs of the frame. Then obviously they had to repaint the frame. So again, this kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier is that they had a really good plan and everything was kind of clean and tidy of how they're going to execute building the Sunset Tripper. So Class of British Bear, CBS, we acquired this bike from a seller in San Diego. Um, the person that we bought it from is a really nice person. Um, he was very well aware of the bike and the history. I believe from the person that he bought it from, his father bought the bike from Triumph of Burbank. He even gave us an original t-shirt that said Triumph Sunset Tripper. So we've had the bike for a couple of years. Um, if some of you guys are questioning what happened to the paint, um, the bike was in storage and basically in the desert, the heat and the cold, it actually started to eggshell it. And I would love to have saved it, preserved it, but it was getting to the point where the paint was just literally falling apart. So again, Mike was able to recreate the paint job and make it all come together. So uh, my father, Malcolm Pops, as you guys might know him, um, he spent a lot of time getting this bike roadworthy, obviously, you know, getting the title for it, getting everything registered. Um, the motor itself, probably according to the gauges, I think it has about 15,000 miles on it. From what we've seen, the motor has not been touched. It probably hasn't even had a top end job. It's extremely quiet, it's smooth, and it purrs like a cat. Now, some of you guys know that we sell restoration parts, um, but we do appreciate choppers. I will be honest, choppers aren't my, I'm not really big on choppers, but I really do appreciate the Sunset Tripper and also other choppers. I mean, it might not be my style, but I think they're really cool bikes and there's a lot of imagination that goes on into them. But I will say this, if I were to take a bike out on the road, you know, let's say if I have my Clubman bike or a road racer, this bike is really, really comfortable. It might not be the best handling, especially at lower speeds, but when you're actually on the road, this is a bike that you could actually tour. You can put your luggage on the back or whatever you have your bag, and you can actually just take this and just go for miles and miles and miles and really enjoy yourself. Now, those that follow us on Instagram and Facebook, we have posted photos, not very much, of the Sunset Tripper. And a lot of people always ask, are you gonna restore the bike? And, and basically, in short, absolutely not. This bike is kind of a, a time capsule, and it would kind of not do the bike justice if we were to literally take all the chopper stuff off and make it a TR6. You know, I do appreciate stock motorcycles and restorations, but there are so many Triumph TR6s out there on the market. They're a dime a dozen, to be honest. But a bike like this has so much character. Even though it didn't come from Triumph like this, the fact that it's actually together and in this state is pretty rare. And for myself, I think this bike just has so much character. And uh, so no, we, we definitely want it restored and um, the bike's registered, it's on the road and we're enjoying it. All right, you guys, so that's pretty much all the information and history that I have on the Sunset Tripper. I know you guys are watching the video and probably like, hey, I want to hear the bike start. So uh, we're going to start the bike up and uh, we'll let it idle so you guys can actually hear how it sounds, how the engine sound and the exhaust note. All right, so the process is pretty much the same as like any other British bike. Turn the gas on, tickle it. Sometimes it takes a few seconds. There it goes. All right. Get on. Ignition, don't forget that. All right, you guys, I appreciate you watching today's video. If you like the Triumph Sunset Tripper, you're gonna like our Triumph Sunset Tripper t-shirts. Curtis, my boy right here, he has one on and he likes it. You can't see him. But anyways, uh, like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And uh, thanks for watching, I'm out.
All right, this is Curtis. You liking the t-shirt? Yeah. You can smile. It's okay. All right, you guys. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching.